Hey, this is Tim Miller with The Bulwark, and it is finally over. After three weeks, the House Republicans have finally come up with a speaker. It is Mike Johnson of Louisiana, the guy we were talking about this morning, who is anti-gay, extremely anti-abortion, and and was one of the organizers of, of Donald Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election. Here, I think, is the top line takeaway from today's vote. The supposed institutionalists, the supposed moderates in the House conference, who stood up and showed a little backbone for once in saying no to Jim Jordan, all folded to somebody who is just as extreme as Jim Jordan, but just puts a nicer face on it. And that's really how you should think about Mike Johnson. He is kind of a clean cut, captain of the speech team, milk drinking for lunch, debater who is a family man. He is not a bomb thrower. And so he has all of the same views and positions as Jim Jordan and the MAGA crazies. Uh, but he puts a kinder, gentler face on it that has allowed the establishment folks to go along with it. And, and I think this is really the takeaway. Over on MSNBC, just a little bit ago, Deep Kornacki was saying that the institutionalists went along with Mike Johnson. He, he mentioned Kay Granger. And I just, I gotta say, I think what has been revealed is that there really aren't any institutionalists in the House Republican GOP, and there really aren't any moderates. There are people that situationally are, are willing to act moderate or act in defense of the institution. There are people that had personality grievances with Jim Jordan and didn't like that he was a bomb thrower and didn't like you know, his manner. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, they are happy to go along with the most anti-institution, the most extreme and radical and ideological speaker that the Republicans have had. And yeah, that includes Newt Gingrich. Uh, Let's look at Mike Johnson's rap sheet here. His views on abortion. Well, let's just watch this video first. Roe v. Wade gave constitutional cover to the elective killing of unborn children in America, period. You think about the implications of that on the economy. We're all struggling here to to cover the bases of Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and all the rest. If we had all those able-bodied workers in the economy, we wouldn't be going upside down and toppling over like this. Listen, I will not yield. I will not. Able-bodied workers? I I, Look, I'm... I'm generally pro-life you know I, I support reasonable exceptions reasonable restrictions on abortion um uh, but this this is insane i i the, this is not pro-life I, this is radical this is forced birth this is this is taking a position that we need women to have to to birth children so that we can have workers that is a dystopian view he has put forth three bills that would ban abortion, almost all circumstances, no exceptions. I, I, this, is, this is not a position that, that is supported by uh, even many Republicans, certainly not swing voters. Um, he is way, way out there on this stuff. Um, he also, a, a, as I've mentioned, is extremely anti-gay, uh, uh, was spearheaded uh, the Don't Say Gay effort here in Louisiana, spearheaded another bill that would allow um, businesses to discriminate against gays and not face any punishment. Um, today on the House floor, a Democratic member who is gay, she wished her wife a happy anniversary before voting for Speaker Jeffries as a little bit of a a shiv, a little bit of a jab at the Republicans for going for Mike Johnson. Um, something else that happened on the House floor that was pretty crazy today when he when he was nominated. Representative Aguilar, who was nominating uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, on behalf of the Democrats, pointed out that Mike Johnson was one of the architects of the effort to overturn the election uh, in 2020. He spearheaded the legal effort joined by more than 100 of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle in support of a dangerous and baseless lawsuit to overturn the results of the 2020 election. He was unapologetic about this. He did many interviews with it. He whipped fellow members. He gave a speech about it on the morning of January 6th. Um, And and when Aguilar said he was one of the people spearheading the effort to overturn the election, what happened on the Republican side of the aisle? Republican Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna shouted, damn right! House Republicans have put their names behind someone who has been called the most important architect of the Electoral College objections. He spearheaded. That's fair. That's fair. We know how you feel. Yeah, you've made that clear. Damn right. 
So that is where they are at on the other side. The, the people, the supposed moderates who said, you know, like Ken Buck, who said they weren't going to vote for an election denier, well, they all got behind somebody today who was not only an election denier, but an organizer of the effort to overturn the election, someone who spread the most insane conspiracies about the Dominion voting machines, and, and, and they are not even embarrassed about it. They're saying, damn right we want an election denier to be second in line to the White House. Damn right. And, and I, that is the most telling moment about what is happening over there in the House Republican conference. So um, that's, what, that's what matters for the House Republicans. Here's another thing that matters on the political side for House Republicans. Those members that are in districts that voted for Joe Biden, um, a lot of members from New York and California who, run, who won these purple districts, uh, they're in for a rude awakening, I have to tell you, politically speaking, because the ads that are going to be run targeting them, saying they supported this man, Mike Johnson, are going to be brutal. So look, back when I was a Republican, I, I can tell you, for years and years, Republicans have ran ads targeting Democrats that had nothing to do with Nancy Pelosi, that were from states far from California, saying that Democrat so-and-so supports San Francisco values. They support these extreme far-left progressive views. And those ads were run mercilessly against Democrats uh, all through the 2010s, all through this decade. The Republicans are about to get a taste of their own medicine because regular voters do not know who Mike Johnson is. And they're about to be introduced to him through social media. I'm already seeing the memes on TikTok and threads and Facebook and Instagram everywhere, through memes about Mike Johnson, through paid advertisements, through mail, uh, uh, through interviews that Democratic surrogates give. Uh, there will be a surround sound trying to get through to these swing voters, letting them know that their rep just back somebody that is not just not just has the most extreme position on abortion imaginable that is not just hostile to gays that that did not just want to overturn the election to defend Donald Trump but has a host of other far right views uh, you know all, any any of them that you can list climate change denialism uh, wanting to t do severe cuts to Social Security and Medicaid. Um, the list is going to go on and on. This guy is far right down the line. And, um, and, and these voters in swing districts that, that do not share the views of a extreme Republican from northwest Louisiana uh, are about to find out that their member voted to, to install this guy and to put him into power. The last big thing that, to take away from this and the thing that I'm the most concerned about right now Johnson has been a avowed opponent funding for Ukraine. We now get to a place here where the Biden administration is asking for another hundred billion. Now, again, most of this isn't cash. This is not cash transfers. It is just funds to you know send weapons and other other uh, other services to Ukraine to help bolster their effort. Um, the Biden uh, proposal includes money for Ukraine, includes some uh, less, but some money for Israel, includes money for the border. Um, and, and, and a few other items that, that even Republicans want. Mike Johnson has been a staunch opponent of Ukraine, of the effort to, to help Ukraine, that is. And the Speaker has broad power to determine what kind of legislation comes to the floor. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if this guy um, does blocks efforts to bring Ukraine funding to the floor. I, I would love to be wrong about this. I, I think that there's a lot of negotiations to ha happen in the coming months. Um, Maybe uh, cooler heads will prevail. There are plenty of Republicans, not as many as I'd like, but plenty of Republicans who do want to support our ally in Ukraine. This would would pass the Senate uh, with Republican votes. So, you know, maybe this guy will wheel and deal. But, but based on his track record, there's a lot of reason to be concerned that this has been a win, frankly, for Vladimir Putin and that, that Vladimir Putin can feel bolstered by knowing that Mike Johnson is is in the House and knowing that coming down the pike, the Republicans are about to nominate Donald Trump. So we end the day here uh, with the Republican Party fully on board with the Donald Trump platform, with the Donald Trump political program to overturn democracy uh, and, and install Donald Trump using any means necessary. Uh, the nominee of the party is likely to be Donald Trump, and the Speaker of the House is going to be a top lieutenant who was forceful and unapologetic in his efforts to overturn the 2020 election uh, and advance false conspiracies about what happened there. Um, we are going to be back with more. Uh, uh, we'll have the next level with JVL and A.B. Stoddard on this feed and, and more from Charlie Sykes and others. So subscribe to The Bulwark on YouTube. Keep on coming back. We'll talk to you soon.
Hey, if you like this video and our content, I'd love for you to become a Bulwark Plus member. You get bonus podcasts, uh, you get bonus newsletters, you get bonus takes from me that maybe don't come up on the YouTube feed. Um, you can try it out for free at thebulwark.com slash free trial. The link is below in the description. Uh, we'd love to have you as a member of our community. Uh, we have great commenters and uh, great opportunities for people who want to protect democracy.